Welcome to City Cinematheque, where the art and pleasure of the movies are the subject of serious discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach film studies at the City College of the City University of New York. Today we're going to be seeing another film in our Bulgarian series, Dog's Home, directed by Stefan Komondarev. If you like films about country estates, and there are a number of them in the English and Russian traditions, you're going to like this film because it uses the country home as a kind of symbol of the nation and of the characters' relations to their own history, to the history of their nation, and to one another today. After today's film, we'll be able to unravel some of that with our guest. It's a pleasure to have here on City Cinematheque, Milena Savova, a scholar from Bulgaria now working at New York University. Without further ado, let's travel to the seaside in Bulgaria and take a look at Dog's Home. Welcome back to City Cinematheque. I hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to go to Paris. Oh, no, you didn't go to Paris. You went to Bulgaria. And here we are, not in Café La Boheme, but on the set of City Cinematheque. We've got 30 minutes to talk about this fascinating film, and it's a pleasure today to welcome to City Cinematheque a longtime uh, friend, uh, Dr. Milena Savova, originally a professor of English at the University of Sofia in Bulgaria, and currently the director of the Center for Foreign Languages and Translation at New York University. Welcome to CUNY TV, Milena. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Great, great. Let's, you know, you're Bulgarian. You know a great deal about the background of this film. I mean, the things that would be obvious to a Bulgarian audience. So let's just begin with a, a few s simple uh, things. For example, um, where is this taking place, and what is this uh, this villa, this very lovely, lovely villa? What does that tell us about uh, some of these characters? The film opens with a pseudo-death scene, right. as I like to think uh, of it, um, on the coast, uh, the Bulgarian Black Sea coast. Uh, it has some indication at uh, uh, one point that it is the northern coast of uh, Bulgaria, where I happen to come from, by well, the way. Well, well, well. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> it is a small world. and. Um, uh, it is um, a villa, uh, judging by the architecture, I can tell that it's a pre-World War II villa. Okay. It's a fairly large villa, uh, I suppose we agree on that. So uh, the uh, Jana, uh, the main character, she must uh, have been from a fairly wealthy family. Right. Uh, she inherited this v villa from her parents. Um, during communism, it's hard to tell whether, let's say, it was expropriated and less later restituted or not. It could have been either way. Right. Uh, but there are a lot of references uh, in the film to her past, her mother making rose preserve, and she, she seems to keep the tr family tradition alive in, right. in many respects. The garden around the villa is quite nice. There are a lot of rose bushes. The rose bushes take a lot of care. Um, and uh, the villa, however, is falling apart. Right. Uh, the roof is leaking, as we see. Uh, this is probably due to the fact that she doesn't have enough income to uh, repair it and to maintain it properly. A lot of the life in the summer takes uh, place outdoors, which is fairly common in Bulgaria in the summer. Um, and uh, it's not... It, it's not in a city, it's outside of a town or city. Um, and uh, in, uh, there is a reference at one point that it is in a villa zone. Uh, right. okay. The translation is not very uh, accurate there, but that's exactly what uh, it says in Bulgarian. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, these villa zones are very common along the Black Sea uh, in Bulgaria. Well, so what we have is, is, is this notion that she spans, her life has spanned at least, you know, three generations of significant historical uh, change, that she has been, she, ha she has grown up in some form of privileged childhood, of, 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 of some wealth, uh, and with uh, many of the, the trappings, not only of a large vacation 
uh, villa, but of uh, a traditional Bulgarian attention to certain things. I want to come back to the roses in a second point. Then, obviously, in, through the duration, the majority of her career, uh, she has been an artist uh, throughout the communist re regime, and now she is in some form of retirement. Um, once again, uh, she is repaired, as it were, to this uh, this seaside villa, and uh, you know she is a she is a, a diva, but a but a diva, you know, without uh, an audience any 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 longer. I mean, living quite literally on memories and on. Uh, and on, on fantasies. Let's go back to the pre-war and let's go back to the fact of how much is made about roses in this, is this film. Is this, uh, you know, just a quirk of the film or where do roses fit into Bulgarian culture, economy, etc.? Well, Bulgaria is sometimes called the land of the roses. Uh, the uh, rose oil is uh, famous uh, and uh, I, I know that uh, a large part of the French perfume industry was, is based, I think it still is uh, based on Bulgarian rose oil. Um, it's, uh, it's a large export industry. Um, however, the, uh, ro the roses that are uh, grown for industrial purposes are centered in, the, in a rose valley, which is in the heart of the country, in the middle right. of the country near the Balkan range. Otherwise, the roses that we see there, they are different kind of rose. Okay. Uh, but the, there is a tradition of making rose preserve. Right. Uh, I'm not such an expert, so I don't believe that you can make rose preserve out of any type of rose. It has to be a special petal. But I saw there a lot of roses, right. a lot of ro rose bushes, and it must take a lot of rose bushes to make that preserve. It used to be a fairly strong tradition okay. um, uh, in, in our grandparents' generation. Right. Uh, growing up in Bulgaria, I don't remember any of my mother certainly didn't do it. I don't remember any of my parents' generation making rose, rose preserve. But maybe now, uh, as things have changed again, uh, a lot of people may be trying to revive those right. old traditions. And well, there's a way in which I think you she's, know, she's trying to do that. Exactly. She's a, if I can use one of those fancy uh, phrases, she's a kind of neo-traditionalist, that, that she's going back and she's trying to not only revive the, tra the tradition, but to really recapture uh, a moment in her life, uh, this presumably happy childhood she had in privileged uh, circumstances that uh, su was supported by traditional activities like the you know, pride that one would have in one's rose preserve from that, um, uh, from that epic. Now, this leads us also to, to the question of what would her, what does the film tell us about her status under the communist um, r regime. What is that, that kind of profile? Yes, just uh, be, before I go to that, um, I'd just like to, to go back a little bit to, to her memories and okay, to, to the house, because the few glimpses we have of the inside of the house, it seems to me as though the furniture may still be of her p uh, parents' generation. Right. I, I think there's a lot of old furniture there. The record player is fairly old too. Absolutely so correct. It, it, it seems as though everything remained untouched there throughout uh, those 40 or 50 years of communism. Right, you know, no, no spiffy <laughs> Stalinist furniture from the 50s or anything? I didn't notice N any. No. no, no, absolutely. No. And so there's this whole way in which, uh, in, you know, the, the, the villa lives in a kind of time warp. Yes. It's, it's, it's a place in which nothing really happened during, uh, during the 50, uh, yes. uh, 50 years yeah. of, of, of communism. No, no, no. Uh, now, going back to, to her career during communism, obviously she, she must have been very talented. Uh, Bulgaria uh, has a long operatic tradition. Uh, it's given the world many, many famous, really famous opera singers, Boris Christov, Gerur of Gena Dimitrova, you know, a lot of them have sung at the Metropolitan Opera too. So 
the Sofia opera uh, has always boasted a lot of great voices. So the, the significance of being the prima donna of the Sofia opera places her very, very, very high. Um, uh, now, at the same time, what we see is a retired person with probably a very low income. Right. Uh, and this is due to the uh, position of artists in the post-communist period where things changed very dramatically. If, she, if communism had lasted and she had retired under communism, she would have had a much more comfortable right. life, retirement age. At the same time, um, even though she had been so famous, she had never been to Paris. Very interesting aspect of the film. Yes, yes. I think, I, I, I think uh, so. Yes. Um, now, you know, this is art. So the, the artists, is the, the uh, makers of the film have a message. Right. They can do whatever they want. Uh, in real life, for, a, for an opera, Bul Bulgarian opera singer of that stature, not to have sung abroad, uh, or let's say not to have been to Paris, is perhaps a little questionable. Right. But, you know, well, we're dealing I, with a film here. Well, and also I think uh, we're, we're dealing with, uh, you know, a strongly, uh, a, a film that has certain well-defined characters, but it is also manifestly an allegorical film. Exactly. Uh, because, and, and just to, to, bring, uh, to bring us back to the village just for a, a second, as I did say in my brief introduction, if uh, members of our audience are familiar with the way in which country homes are used either, for example, in English art or in Russian art, in the, yeah. say, the plays yeah. of Chekhov or any number of, of English novels in which you gather characters at a country home from diverse generations or segments of society. They are there presumably for a unified social experience of some kind, but the tradition is is that under that ritualized unity, what is really revealed are all of the uh, is, is all of the diversity, uh, the, which which can mean that people come from different places, but also that they have very different fates in the in in the society. Yes, yes. And I think that's and we see that. And and we we, we see that um, uh, here very strongly that she has led a privilege in, of the three epochs in her life. She has led a privileged existence by, you know, by talent and quirk of birth in two of the three. She is manifestly and self-consciously in the last stage of her life. I mean, witness the opening scene that you referenced so well uh, about, you know, she's staging her own dying scene. She's, she, she's doing that. And that, the last stage, is the stage without privilege. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Going back to, uh, to uh, her life during communism right. while she was the prima donna, there's a very uh, significant uh, point which has probably eluded uh, uh, the American viewers. Um, when she tells uh, Victor, uh, the young man, about how they started the Paris game, okay. And she says, this was after a concert in Bratsigovo. Now, Bratsigovo is a small Bulgarian village in the Rodopi Mountains. Why would she have a concert in Bratsigovo? Official the tours done by artists under the regime. Right, right, because mm -hmm. they, artists, had to go out. Uh, uh, culture was concentrated in the few big cities. Right. And artists had an obligation to go out to the villages and smaller towns and to, uh, to perform. And, and they're, they're state employees in any case. It's part right. of, as it were, the contract that if you're going to be subsidized by the government as this, then one of the things you have to do right. is exactly this sort of thing, which may <laughs> not be the kind of thing that a prima donna opera singer really wants to do. She probably didn't want to do. I can't imagine that Bratsigovo had the stage she would have liked to perform on. Um, 
after a concert like that, you would like to go to perhaps a nice restaurant and enjoy a nice meal with your friends. And Pratigo certainly didn't have a nice restaurant. But she had this loyal friend of 30 years, Philip, through uh, marriages or between marriages and so on. So he followed her to many concerts probably right. out of Sofia and he was uh, after, uh, with her after this concert, probably in the local pub right. and that's when they got this game started out of boredom. Right. Abs absolutely, well. absolutely. Escapism. A form uh, of and, and of course, it's a very interesting fact in the film that the uh, that the young man, and we can perhaps pass over to this young generation for for, for a few minutes, that the young man Victor, uh, who becomes part of this, uh, how shall I put it, false family, uh, and in fact, the last image of the film is is something that looks like a family portrait, even though we know the backstory that they are not, in fact, a, a traditional. Uh, a traditional family. He he has to ask. So what is this whole Paris, you know, game? Yes. yes. Uh, because the issue for for him is not a, a a matter of political privilege, but it's a matter of of, of economics. Uh, the, yes. the, the whole axis of decision making has um, has 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 changed. Now, what about? Uh, since we've talked a, a, a little bit about her and about Philip, uh, the, the, the older man, what about this, this uh, portraiture of the, uh, of the kids, let's call them? What do you make of, what do you make of that? I think, uh, I think the makers of the film want to contrast the new generation, which uh, probably doesn't remember communism mm -hmm. at all. They were, when the changes took place uh, 15 years ago, those kids were probably born, but they were too young to remember anything, uh, with the older ge generation. As we see, uh, most of them are not even aware that anything is going on up upstairs, up right, on absolutely. the shore. Right, right. Uh, and Victor, is the only link between the younger generation and the old generation. And he, he just happened, because of his drunkenness, he just happened to enter their lives. And he got somewhat interested in that right. because he's mm, moderately infatuated with Jeanne. Yeah. But um, uh, otherwise, they, it's, to me, they seem oblivious to, uh, to the past. Absolutely. They have no, uh, present. Uh, they uh, actually we don't know very much about them. They seem to have only a present orientation. Uh, I don't even see a future orientation. No, I think you're absolutely them, correct on moment. that. It does seem to be now, mind you, this is set you know during vacation time, during the summer, and much is made of the expectations of summer. I mean, Philip, uh, you know, talks about that. But it is. You, I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, that they they seem to um, be uh, to live in a hedonistic present, yes, um, and that there seems to be there, very little change or development, um, and and indeed the forays into being you know petty thieves. I mean certainly that one fellow yes. is is experienced in it. it is only there. I mean there's no um, uh, you know this is not somebody who's on his way to becoming a mafia don you know, and building criminal empire. And this because it's all done in the service of simply feeding their immediate needs. Uh, there's, no, there's no thought uh, beyond that. It's, uh, you know, it's at, at best amoral, at worst, you know, not on, on the petty side of, of, uh, 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 of immoral and certainly unconcerned for other people. Uh, the, the whole notion of imagining the lives of these people in a villa is, is something that only Victor seems yes, yes, uh, yes, uh, interested in. Yes, yes, yes. Um, there's also, uh, if I may go back for a moment to uh, the suggestion that Victor makes that she could sell up the villa and everything and go to Paris. This is something that the younger generation has been doing a lot. Uh, in the last 15 years. Uh, well, they don't own a lot of things to sell up, but their parents often sell up uh, things. Uh, 
and send their kids abroad or uh, a lot of younger generation people have immigrated right. uh, in, in search of a better future. Now, she, again the uh, neo-traditionalist, she chooses, even though, she, even though now she can achieve her dream, perhaps, uh -huh. to visit Paris, she chooses to stay. This villa could bring her a lot of money. Right, indeed. Uh, she chooses to stay uh, because the older generation is well-rooted in Bulgaria. They, they, they feel that this is their homeland, this is where their roots are. Well, and she even comments about it. She's, she's explicit about it that, yes. th that this is a dream concocted when she is, is concocted. She wasn't necessarily 25, but still she could imagine being 25. Yes. Uh, and the, and the, the dream is of being in Paris at that age. And she says, well, you know, now I'm, six, now I'm 64. So uh, I, I can't live my own, uh, I can't live my own dream yes. um, yeah. in, in, in that way. Well, this, uh, this film is also interesting, I think, for the degree to which, on the one hand, we're very clearly on location. I mean, we are in this place. We're shooting down there on the beach. We're shooting around uh, a, a villa. Maybe, maybe they had to uh, dress it down to make it, to convert it, etc. I don't know the, 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 that history of its production, production design. On the one hand, so we're there, you know, we all that. On the other hand, th this is a film that keeps veering away from um, what I'd call a sort of strict realism. I mean, it is, a, it is not only a film about some people who were in the theatrical arts, but it's a highly theatrical um, film as well. What do, you make of, what do you make of that, Milena? Yes, uh, I was thinking of that too, and um, I s see it in several respects. For one thing, it reminded me of a tradition among, uh, in the Bulgarian theater more okay. than in the Bulgarian cinema, as far as I remember, uh, of uh, artists exploring their own life, their own artistic life. Um, even during communism, there were a number of theater pieces that played to enormous success uh, about backstage theater life. Okay. They were wonderful, wonderful pieces and with great actors and they were highly successful. Um, and I see this, this film as a, as a continuation of that tr tradition uh, because it's uh, it does explore the, the life of this opera diva. And then it actually, I think it goes a little beyond that because it, uh, it, uh, there's mention of, the two, uh, mu two, uh, of two of the musicians right. uh, who are there when she says that two of them are actually professional musicians. Now that's a very sad aspect um, to add to to the other sadness of the film, because these two professional musicians probably they are looking for some extra income, right. so they go around playing with the two others who are land surveyors and picking uh, rose blossoms to make some extra money. So um, uh, then uh, there are uh, the, the, this is one part of uh, of the the film, and then. Uh, I think there there are lots of references to uh, fairy tales right. and to uh, uh, other filmmakers, world world renowned filmmakers. Uh, of course, every time I see a film about a diva, I I think of Fellini. Right. Um, well, indeed, I think, no, I, it, there, there's this whole scene and, and also the whole notion of people out partying, whether it be a la Dolce Vita, just people yes. out in that, or there are many scenes in Fellini of people dining outdoors, that sort of... And then the interview, I, uh, there were, the, the, there were the, in general, the film reminded me a little bit of Fellini's The Interview as yes. well. Uh, and uh, then... Um, uh, we, uh, we have the, the obvious reference, the very open reference to Charlie Chaplin, right. uh, to uh, A Dog's Life, but then we have a more subtle reference of the whole uh, illusion, of the illusionary life, 
where we we have Chaplin in um, um, the Gold Rush, right. where he eats shoelaces, it's indeed as spaghetti, uh, as spaghetti, and we have the Paris Cafe again, and a, a, a lot of other. This is a very illusory film, right? Uh, in in a number of ways, and then we have two references to Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, we have the Little Matchmaker, uh, uh, Match Girl. And uh, we have uh, the Little Mermaid in the scene where she goes uh, to, uh, with Victor right, to, the to, beach. The, to the beach, and they see her. Um, uh, they see the young girl uh, on the rock. On the rock, um, and then she uh, probably uh, reminisces, or rather imagines, what she would be like when, if if she were that age. They're both uh, clad in white. Uh, I think the, the reference is quite uh, quite obvious. A absolutely. Now, there's another aspect of this that, because we're, we're running out of time, that I wanted to, to, to bring up. This is uh, the uh, Philip character is played by a distinguished uh, Bulgarian uh, Bulgarian actor. Uh, tell us just a little briefly about uh, about him, because a, a Bulgarian audience would bring you know, to any particular role, they remember actors just like we remember actors. We, we think of a John Wayne role, or we think of a, you know, uh, a, a, a Carol Lombard role, or a, you know, n name a star. Uh, just very briefly, um, who, who was he? And I have to use the past tense, sad to say. Yes, yes. Um, um, well, uh, Philip, uh, the Philip character is played by Nikolai Binev, who, um, sadly passed away a couple of months ago, uh, quite suddenly, and uh, uh, he was one of the great actors uh, of Bulgarian theater and film and television. Um, I think this, this performance shows uh, actually uh, uh, why he was considered one of the great actors. Uh, uh, in uh, Bulgaria, on the Bulgarian stage, um, uh, every every Bulgarian, I think everybody who lived in Bulgaria in the last forty-five years knows him. Okay. He had a very characteristic voice. He um, a very velvety voice. He had um, a combination of humor, irony, and wisdom. I'm going to have to cut you off there, but it's not bad to end a tribute to someone with the word wisdom, uh, is it? If you'd like more information about this series or about City Cinema Tech in general, please get in contact with us. The best way to do so these days is through the website at www.cuny.tv. We give that to give that to you again, www.cuny.tv. It's a pleasure chatting with you, Milena. We have run out of time, so I have to uh, say it would be a pleasure to ha have you here again bringing your expertise. Thanks for thank joining you. us today. Thank you. It was and my thank pleasure. you for joining us. I hope you join us again here on City Cinematheque. Bye-bye for now.